Okay, so today's agenda, we're going to cover ECB, the other architectural pattern. This is the only architectural pattern that we have seen so far. I told you that there is a minimum of two architectural patterns required in every product. The default is the client server. What is a client server? Just mention what is a client server. Everyone should have a client server. Why? Because you are serving web pages and to serve a web page in the browser, to be able to go to the browser and type, for example, slice.com or type a localhost slash whatever, this means that this page is being served so this means that there is a web page server that is running behind the scene. So the, the web page server in your case can be Flask, can be Django, can be, um, if you're using Dart, it can be um, uh, an application, a hosting application in Dart. So bottom line, every project has a client and server architecture. Mention this, you have the mark of the first architectural pattern. Okay? For the second architectural pattern, you have one of two options. Go for the layered architecture, which as we agreed in the previous session, it is just a bunch of what, bunch of folders directories you create a folder name it presentation i did this in the previous session you create a folder and name it business logic you create another folder and name it data access if you have any database related file anything dot db dot json dot whatever that you need in firebase or dot sql any database related files put it in the data access folder okay? and this is the mark of the second architectural pattern that's it okay? so it's uh, architectural patterns is just about organization that's it it's all about code organization Refactoring and organization. Uh, for the second artificial pattern, if you want to guarantee more mark, try to implement the ECB pattern, which I'm going to implement in this session. Um, to just, yani, to just yani, reiterate for anyone who's just uh, who has joined, I mentioned that inshallah on Saturday or on Sunday, I'm going to have a full day of code reviews for every group. Okay, So I need to have the code of each group submitted maximum today or tomorrow. Tamam? I'm going to review it, add stuff that you are struggling in had i'm going to implement some some features that you need but partially not everything i'm going to refactor the code for you if you don't know how to refactor stuff to get you started just to make sure that everyone before the final week which is the week of the submission week 11 everyone is ready and week week 11 can be left for you to you know finalize whatever is left in the report finalize any tests that can be written so that's that's the point of the code reviews it's either the due of the draft is, 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 is Saturday. Tamam? The due of the draft is on Saturday. But the code reviews that I want to host, it's either on Saturday or Sunday. And I recommend that every member of the group to be there because I'm going to write code in front of you. Ashan, to understand how things how things got refactored to this way. And while we're at it, I'm going to create some yani, partial uh, design kit in the class diagram for you and the database design part of the AR diagram for you. Yes, it's going to be um, scheduled on Teams, all of these meetings. It's going to be two-hour session per group. Okay? Okay. So just reiterating what is the layer architecture. We started with the presentation layer saying that it is about any static files. If you have dot anything, dot .html, dot .css, dot .javascript, all of these are presentation. If you have any UI handling logic, whenever we say UI handling logic, we refer to the logic that fetches the input fields, the values from the input fields. Okay? If you have any function that fetches the values from the input fields, this is referred to as handling logic, UI handling logic. Put this in the presentation layer. Okay? Um, usually this is the gateway between the front end and the back end tamam? some people refer to it as views right if you have if you remember the route function the route function any 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 function that you have in django or flask that is mapped to a single uh, function so whenever you say some slash sign up this is a route function right the decorator for example slash route something like this or app the route right and you say that you are going to go to the sign up route in Django, this is, the, is, this is done differently using something called URL patterns, but still, in URL patterns, you map a, 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 a route to a function to be fired. Once we see, for example, slash whatever, so localhost, this, slash sign up, you know that if the web browser, Django or Flask, throw this route, some other function behind the scenes, typically in Flask, the function that is going to be fired is written beneath the, the decorator, beneath the route, right? So you can say define um, handle sign up. So this is the function that is going to be fired immediately once a Flask server, right, found that in the browser, you type something like localhost slash login or slash sign up. It's going to find the route and accordingly, Yani fires the, the function that corresponds to the route. Okay? So these route functions are referred to as a route functions are, or dispatcher functions are referred to as a UI handling logic. So if you have any function like this, 
تمام you should know that this belongs to what presentation layer so again route function or router function or if you have a router script containing a bunch of router functions like this this is ui this is the user interface تمام طيب um some people call it routers or dispatchers let's take the business logic layer this is the implementation of the core functionalities or the main use cases تمام to identify clearly what is a use case i recommend you strongly in intertemly to do something called the use case diagram that we have seen before if you created the use case diagram for for example the blog application that we have been taking so far let's say a blog application contains how many functionality we started off with the following right with login صح كده we started off with uh, a user can log in in a blog app a user can sign up or register and then we said that a user this is what I showed you or demoed in the terminal run in the previous session a user can do what create a blog and finally a user can view the blogs that we have that he has created تمام i'm going slightly faster than usual فلو في حاجه مش فاهمها اسال عادي تمام just ask about it تمام so in the blog application these are the use cases this is a use case each one of those in a, in a use case diagram طيب if you know that these are the use cases you should understand that these are the core functionalities تمام you're not aware of the use cases لان ده هيفرق معايا because we are going to need these use cases whenever we implement the ecb pattern in just a second تمام so to identify the use cases create a use case diagram for your for your case you can have login register um add expense uh, update expenses uh, uh, i don't know maybe if you have books so add a book or schedule a reading time something like this تمام طيب Okay, so these are the core functionalities which are be, which should be placed in the business logic layer, which is just a, يعني a folder in your product. تمام طيب. Um, so I think this is just yes, 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 yes. So uh, looking back at the um, at the account class that we have implemented, this is the current implementation, and we say, we said that there is a blog application or a blog a blog class that needs to access the account. Why is that? لي لأن إحنا اتفقنا إنه a user has blogs. تمام؟ so how many blogs does a user have? this is the relationship and we said that an account can have multiple blogs but a blog belongs only to one account this maps to the same exact rule that you had in a in databases so in databases the default rule was as follows if you have in databases many to one side right usually what happens is the following you take the primary key from the one side and place it as a foreign key in the menu side صح صح كده؟ right it's the same thing from the uml perspective in the uml notation you take an object of the account class and pass it to the mini side which is the blog class تمام الناس اللي هناك تمام معايا طيب so if you take a look at the current implementation of the account class you will see that these use cases the login and the register these use cases belong to which class the account class صح كده if you take a look at the rest هنا you will see that there is another two use cases the create blog and the view blogs this belongs into a implemented as methods get all blogs which corresponds to view blogs and create blog posts which corresponds to create blog these are placed in which class اللي هي block class واتفقنا ان these are we agreed that these were a domain objects تمام or domain entities تمام كده طيب طيب the last layer was the data access or the persistence layer it's referred to the same thing تمام this is where you perform the CRUD operation so in the business logic the core functionalities تمام the core functionalities the main use cases that are implemented بنحطها في business logic layer أو الفولدر ده تمام تمام so if you have a class that does these use that implements these use cases you should know that this account class should belong to the business logic layer and this blog class should belong to the business logic layer as well تمام طيب the data access or the persistence if you know anything if you have any CRUD operations you can aggregate these CRUD operations just like read and write and delete and update all of these aggregate them put them in one class and name it as data access this is your data access layer put it in the folder of data access layer amen let's talk about the following um, we have covered how to in the previous session how to يعني, uh, refactor from composition to association تمام? how to introduce domain objects previously we didn't have account or block all that I had was what logic class we just named a generic name for the class that is logic class containing everything everything every use case 
تمام؟ We separated things into domain object which is the account and which is also another domain object is the block تمام؟ And then we filtered or refactored everything to layer architecture تمام؟ And layer architecture as we have agreed is the following <laughs> Layer architecture is just a, a folder So in a folder put your user interface uh, class in there The account classes, the account and the block classes that contains the business use cases Put them in the folder called business logic layer The same thing for the data access folder put in there the data access class تمام انا مش عارف اركز في في اللي انا بقوله فيعني طيب so i i recommend strongly ان انت instead of doing this because عمر asked me in the previous session تمام um what if you want to do this in visual paradigm يعني how do i do this shadowing like in my case i did this يعني um shadowing beneath every class to indicate that this belongs to the presentation folder and this belongs to Business use cases, oh, register, login, مش عارف ايه. هنا the business use cases for the blog is the create, uh, get all blogs, create blogs, and this belongs to the business logic layer, and it is shadowed like this. So what if we want to do the same thing, but in visual paradigm? Something that Dr. Ahmed actually يعني, recommended, and I wanted to tell you this, maybe يعني, it's going to guarantee you more marks. And instead of doing something like this via any يعني, editing tool, do this via visual paradigm using something called packages or packaging diagram. What is the packaging diagram? We're not going to introduce any new diagram. It's just as simple as creating a class diagram with, with يعني, a new touch. But some shock to Okay, so I'm just going to really quickly go to the class diagram and I'm going to create a bunch of classes which are conceptual classes. I'm not going to write any of these attributes. You know that there's a user interface and you know that there is an account class and you know that there is a blog class. And finally, we have the data access. So in order to highlight or shadow that these, for example, belong to the business logic, this belongs to the presentation, and this belongs to the data access layer, all you can do is to drag and drop the package from here. You can just say, this is the package, and I'm going to refer to this package. Remember, this looks like what? This looks like what? Like a folder, صح? And this is what we agreed. Layer is a folder. So just say that the layer here, or the folder here, named as presentation. And... The second that you just expand this above the UI, it's going to ask you, do you want to add the covered children into this into this package? And just say yes, tamam. And this is where you can say that a package or the layer is the presentation contains what the UI diagram or the UI class. And you can usually create your associations between the classes like this, tamam. Both of the account and block classes need to access the data access um, class to, to perform the CRUD operation. Now do the same thing for the business logic and the data access. Now just let it cover the, the children and this is it. This is where you say that this is the business logic. And finally, the packet is the following. Tamam? Let's just highlight it. And this is your data access. That's it. Okay, so this is how you depict that you have implemented layered architecture. But this is the depiction of layered architecture in the design. تمام? يعني now we have depicted that we have actually implemented a layered architecture in the design, right? In the design, meaning that this is depicted in the class diagram. But how do you depict it inside the implementation? Whenever we see the code, we need to see that the architecture is implemented. How do we do this easily? By looking at the following, see, I have created a folder. This is what we did in the previous session. Folder, a folder called BLL, folder called data access. This is containing data access to Pi. The BLL contains the, the, the classes that contains the business use cases. The main, the core functionalities. صح? اللي هما account to blog. And there is the database layer. If you have any .db file, if you have any .sql file, .json, whatever file that you can use for storage, just place it there. And finally, the presentation layer or the folder here contains the user interface, which, as we have just mentioned, in user interface that if you don't have this kind of class, and I'm going to mention this whenever we get to the ECB, this is just your static files plus any function that handles fetching the data from the input fields. And the function with fetching data from the input fields, you have static files, place everything in the presentation layer. How to depict this as a class? and So this is essentially the implementation in my of my layered architecture in my project. Okay. 
So this is how it looks like from a conceptual or a design point of view. This is how it looks like from an implementation point of view. Ma'am, these are the folders. If you expanded them, you would see them as the, you know, just a view. Yeah, I have viewed to you, ma'am. Um, in the wiring application, the app, the app.py, the one that is wired, the application that is responsible for running, for hosting the web application, the web server, Flask, that says app.run, for example, in, do, in Dart, in, in Flask, and whatever. So, so the application that is responsible for um, wiring everything together, that is running the, the entire project, ma'am, this is the app.py. Usually, this app.py, to indicate that you have an app.py, you would find a file that includes the imports of all the classes. If you have a file that includes all of the imports, this is your app.py. A file that has app.run, this is the app.py. Uh, so it imports all of the internal backend system components. How does it look like? Usually it should look like this. All of the imports at the top. So I'm importing from the presentation, the user interface. I'm importing the account. I'm importing the blog and importing the data access. This is the first part. The second part usually is responsible for the system initialization or creating the object and injecting them or associating them together. So you create the object of the user and the blog. And then you associate the data access object. This object, by the way, contains all of the CRUD operation. It contains uh, read, write, delete, and update. So you associate this object to the account, right? To the account object. This is the association. We are sending this object via the constructor. You associate the data access object for the block via the constructor to the block. But remember, we said that the block needs it's a one to many, so the many take an object of the account inside of it. So we need the account play because every block has an author, and you need the author, which is the username inside account. So, so we need this piece of information from the account, and we discussed this in the brief in the previous session. Finally, the user interface is going to use both of them. And this is this maps exactly to the association. See, this association here, this link, means that this object is being sent. Yani, try to understand it in a reverse way. Okay? Look at it reversibly. The, 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 user, the user interface access the account. صح? So this means that there is an object of the account being sent to the user interface. صح? Look at it from this way. The user interface access the blog. So this means if the arrow is this way, this is the access class. Okay? So the... Um, an object of the block is being sent to the user, inter to the user, to the user interface. And this is depicted here. We have an object of the account and we have an object of the block. How is this seen in the implementation? Like this. This is how it's seen from the implementation. And, uh, the link here, the first link. Okay. So this is the first link. This link here, this association link, means that there's an object of the account being sent to the user interface. Okay, so an object of the account, which is this one, uh -huh, this one is being sent to, a, to the user interface, to the constructor of the user interface. Okay. Look at the other one, this link, okay, no, there is a block, this is the arrowhead, this is the directionality or the navigability, so this accesses this one, this is the access class. Reversibly, the block object needs to be sent into a, the constructor of the user interface. So the second that you are creating a user interface, you should also send a block object that we have created beforehand in this line. We talked about these associations before, but I'm just recapping. Let's talk about the ECB pattern and give you just a theoretical background before we start refactoring, because refactoring the code is going to be an annoying task. The entity controller boundary, or in short, ECB architectural pattern, these are, this is the, short, the shorthand. You should understand one thing. ECB's architectural patterns, are used to organize code. Tamam? Even design patterns, design patterns, architectural patterns, there is no efficiency. We're not talking about time complexity or whatever. We're just talking about how to organize the code into yani, structural pieces or structural units. That's it. So the motivation, why do we need to implement Aslan in our project? Why do we need to implement an ECB? Let's take the following use case. Say in the same blog application that we have agreed that in this blog application, a user can log in, register, create, post, and view blog posts. Let's say that the stakeholders, the ones that are paying the money to, yeah, to have the application delivered, they introduce a new requirement or multiple new requirements. One of them is we want to have a page that lets, lets us or allows us, a, we can add personal information to the profile. Let's say that we can have another page that lets you update the personal information in your profile. Let's say that we have another thing. We can add unique interests تمام, to our profile. And we can also update our unique interests. This is, this is wrong. معلش. يعني المفروض يبقى في adding personal information or updating personal information. And this is adding interests and this is updating interests. تمام? So we have four new use cases. How does it look in a, in a use case diagram? This is the new uh, use case diagram. تمام? 
the new use case diagram follows the following. These are the four core use cases that we have started off with. These are the new requirements, adding personal information, updating personal information, adding interests, updating interests into, into, into the profile page. تمام؟ حلو جدا. So this is the use case, the core functionalities, the business use cases. Now, if we want to يعني, design this in a different way, before we start with the ACB, we can, one, one would say that adding and updating, this can be aggregated into one, um, one um, uh, use case mentioned as a, referred to as, la or labeled as a manage. Just say manage. This means that you can add, to update, to delete anything. صح? Add interests and update interests. This can be also aggregated into one use case, meaning that you can just label it as a many interests. Okay? And let's, let's have some mapping here. Yani we said that in the account class, in the current account class, okay? we have implementation for which use cases? Register and login. صح? So notice the most added use cases are related to a تمام لو لو جينا بصينا هنا the use cases here are added to يعني should be added to which يعني implementation of these use cases should be added to which class to which class of these إيه account صح because all of these are related to the account adding personal information to the profile which is the account updating personal information on the profile adding interest to the profile updating interest uh, on your profile صح for all of these implementations all of these use cases should be added to this class صح كده متفقين على ده we are all agreeing on this part. So this, the account class contains all of these use cases. Now, let's see how ugly this is going to look like whenever we actually add all of these implementations to a single class. Okay? So this means that to fit and implement these, these added يعني, use cases, the four ones here, we need to add them as implemented methods into the account class. صح? So this is the new account class with the accommodated changes or requirements. You have the register and login and the couple of helper functions here. But see, you have four new methods, add interests, update profile uh, interests, right? Add personal information, update personal information. Now, let me ask you a question. These are the added use cases. Let me ask you a question. Do you think is it okay to يعني, let a class grow this much, knowing that there can be more features to be added in the future, more extensions to be added in the future? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Code-wise, يعني, clean code-wise, architectural-wise. It's a bad thing. صح? Why do you think it's a bad thing? What, what kind of يعني, issues does this introduce to me? Uh, what kind of principles, principles what kind of principles does this break? Hello, single responsibility for which class? On the scope of the account class, صح? So the account class is doing way too many things, صح? And this is not good. في حاجة كمان ممكن حد يقولها. What else? What What are we violating by adding all of the new use cases in the same account class? طبعاً يعني you can say readability. يعني if I look at the class diagram of or if I look at the code a class that contains 500 lines, this is not readable. يعني we can understand this. But other than that, you can Remember our discussion about the God objects? The God object was the reason that this Aslan discourse existed. We said that you should not put every implementation, every function, every class as a single A in a single script. So we started to divide our codes or implementations into multiple scripts. صح? And from there, we refactored the scripts into classes. And we have object-oriented, right? And after some, some point, we decided that the logic class is too generic to be a class itself. So we refactored into domain objects. Right? So the logic class, which was just a single class in the previous lab, we saw that we refactored in, uh, it into two domain objects, an account class and a, and a plug class. So we have been on the path of refactoring and dividing and separating the concerns or the responsibilities. So to tell you the, the answer here, this is where we can say that we are going back to what we have been يعني, st trying to stay away from. We are creating a God object inside the account class. تمام? We are violating the single responsibility. تمام? And finally, the class is not cohesive. يعني إيه cohesive? Your class should be related into doing things that are يعني, related to each other. Methods that are related to each other. This is not related at all. You have register. You have login use case. You have interests. You have personal information. How is this a cohesive class? صح كده? Please mention these things whenever we refactor. Mention these before and after. Even in, in bullet points, it's fine. But mention it in the report. Okay, so this is usually, this is, by the end of the day, this is the motivation that you need to understand why we introduce the ACB. The ACB solves this problem. 
the ECB, in just a second, you'll understand that it is one of the patterns that lets you aggregate, uh, يعني, encapsulate related, uh, related logic. يعني مش دول related مثلا لبعض ال interest مثلا. We have a use case that is related to the interest. So two use cases in the interest. So and two use cases related to the personal information. And there is a use case for the login and a use case for the register. We can encapsulate these into smaller classes. تمام؟ um, we discussed this before. All pattern, design or architectural, serving one, one general purpose, refactoring and organization. ECB is no different. Now, the key points here is that entity control boundary is about breaking responsibilities based on the use case. This is why I told you it is good if you want to implement the ECB to start off by a sketch of the use case diagram. If you sketch the use case diagram, if you know the use cases, typically you have an idea, a guide to you from the design on how the ECB is going to be implemented. The ECB is driven by the use cases. We create a controller. This is essentially the bottom line of it. You create a controller for every use case. What is a controller? But after you create a controller for every use case, you need to create a boundary for every controller that you have created. What does this mean, Bardo? You are going to understand in just a second. Now, let's start with the entities. We said that the ECB entity, controller, and boundary. Let's start with the entities. Entities refer to an object in the domain space of the problem or the system. The domain space for a blog application. If I wanted to you to, يعني, to extract the, the, the domain objects, we have a blog application. What are the domain objects? So, stuff that has characteristics, that has operations. We did this, this in the previous sessions. What are the domain objects in the domain space and the blog application? In the scope, in the scope of the blog, blog application. How are they? We can have an account, we can have a blog. I don't know, maybe you can add more stuff. Yani, you can have a table for schedules if you want to schedule the reading for a certain blog and so on. Tamam? So these are the entities. So essentially, objects in the domain space. This is it. Tamam? But there are some rules that is going to help you. Tamam? Usually includes a Ashan best stuff. These are the giveaways. These are the يعني, the keynotes of the entities. An entity usually contains the attributes that corresponds to columns in tables. تمام? يعني, let's say, no, database, you created something like this. Whether you are using, using SQL Lite, SQL, or whatever يعني, kind of database engine. So in the account, you decided that this is the table, the account table in the database. So you have username, you have password, you have an email. These are the, the tables, uh, the, the columns, sorry. If these are the attributes, the attributes that you have in the database scope, in the database domain, right? these are the attributes in the account table, you should know that this maps one-to-one -to, -one to the attributes that should be existing in your class diagram. So from the UML perspective, and I mentioned this in the previous session, Bardo, but let's say it again. From the UML perspective, I should create account class for every account table. Or let's say that for every class, you need to create a table. صح? So we have an account table. Does this mean that we have a we need to create a an account class? What do what what attributes do we put there? Wallahi al hasab. Are we working on ACB? Is this an entity? In my case, yes, this is an entity. Lay. How do you know that this is an entity? It is just the account is basically a domain object. Something in the domain space, something that has characteristics. Yeah, it has characteristics. Hey, characteristics, hey, the attributes. It has attributes. So, so this is an entity class, meaning that it should contains the attributes that corresponds to the same attributes of the table in the database. So, so if the table in the database contains these attributes, this means that the class account contains the same attributes. So it's a one-to-one -one kind of mapping thing. So you have the attributes that corresponds to columns in tables in the database. This is the first thing. An entity class usually contains getters and setters. And you know what are getters and setters, which from the previous uh, semester. Um, finally, and, uh, and not finally, there is something optional here. It's opinionated, and we're going to discuss this in the, in the next session. Yani. You can have CRUD operations, CRUD operations from the data access. Yani, if you have something that does the reading, that does the writing, read, write, delete, you can include all of these CRUD operations in an entity class. And the most important thing, the foremost and most important thing, the delegation method. تمام؟ Delegation methods are going to be seen in, in practice or in, in action in just a second. تمام؟ طيب. What layer does the entity belongs to? هتحطها فين؟ طيب احنا عملنا, we did a class that is called 
account and we labeled it as a as an entity. Same thing for blog. Which, where, which layer should we place it in? In the data access. Why? Because we said that usually the entities are really close to the database. صح? We just said that there is a one-to-one -one mapping. شباب, انتو معايا? We just said that there is a one-to-one -one mapping between the table and the class. So this means that the entity class maps to the table in the database. So it needs to access the CRUD operations. This is why we are going to put it in the data access layer. تمام كده? طيب, one question that is, يعني, is going to be a point of discussion and is going to introduce us to a new design pattern that is called the DAO. Or احنا شفناه اصلا يعني this has been seen before. It is called the data access object. And you have created this multiple times in the previous session. But we are going to understand fully how to implement the DAO in the next session. تمام؟ طيب a question here, uh, يعني a design question. Should the entity classes, هل ال entity should the entity classes should access the data access, the CRUD operation, or vice versa, or the data access should be in, accessing the entity? We will answer this in the next session, inshallah. But let's just assume that the default implementation that we have from two to three sessions from before. And if we have an entity class like this, this is the one that's going to be accessing the CRUD file or the CRUD class. Tamam? Right. Um, the rules of communication goes as follows. If you have an entity class, tamam, you can only talk to a control class or a controller or a, another entity. Tamam? خلينا بس في أول واحدة. If you have an entity class, you can talk a, to another uh, entity or a to a controller. This means, let's take a look at this diagram here. Okay. We have an account, the same entity that we have been mentioning. Okay. And let's say that the use case, you will understand in just a second why did I create a sign up controller. But let's, 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 let's say that we are going to create a controller class for every use case. So for the use case of the sign up, I've created a controller for it. So this is the, back, uh, uh, the business logic. Okay. So, Take a look at the boundary. The boundary here, this can be exactly يعني, written in this way in your class diagram. If you have a form, a sign up form, this can be created as a class, تمام? containing what? Containing just the name of sign up form, and this is your boundary. If you have another form that does the login, or another form for, for expenses, تمام? you can say that there is an expense form, there is a login form. All of these are boundaries. Now, my question is this um, ECB implemented class diagram, is this logical? That's صح or غلط? Is this right or wrong? Based on an ECB, this is implemented as an ECB. This is the boundary, this is the controller, and the, EC and the entity. I'm, I'm looking at the entity here. Look at the communication rules. We, the default is what, is what in Nuhna, if we have a boundary, then the boundary can talk to the controller, and the controller should be able to, eh, the mediator should be able to reach to the database, or to the closest thing to the database, which is the entity. So this sounds fine, but this association is wrong. What do you think? صح احنا هنا في الكوميونيكيشن رول وي جاست سيد ذات ان انتيتي كان نوت ايه ما فيش اكس هنا ذير از نو اكس هير سو ان انتيتي شود نوت بي ايبل تو اكسس ذا باوندري اور فايس فيرسا يعني اي شود نوت يعني شباب شباب انت لو السيستم عندك اف يو هاف ذا سيستم ديزاين از ذا فولوينج يو هاف ا ساين اب فورم اند فروم ذا ساين اب فورم يو اميديتلي ذا فاليوز ذات يو انتر ان ا سبيسيفيك انبوت فيلد جوز تو ذا داتابيس ذيس از ذا وورست يعني سكيورتي امبلمنتد او سكيورتي اسبيك امبلمنتد ابلكيشن يعني in, in, the, in the norms of software engineering. Because if you didn't hear about the term, there is something called SQL injection. ممكن عمر يعني يشرح لكم الكلام ده يعني تمام؟ فـ SQL injection refers to what? And if I have something like Moodle, SQL injection just simply an attack that can be performed from any form. يعني if you have any form in the world, in any website, any form typically has what? An input field. صح كده؟ Usually any input field Input field that be, يعني أنا, I will fetch the values and insert it into, into a database. مش كده؟ أي input field كده أنا بحط the values دي. I'm going to insert values هنا. And these values are going to be fetched and placed in a table. Insert into the table. Let's say that I'm going to sign up, for example. صح كده؟ So if the input field directly was connected to the database, I can write an SQL query. That's how I'm going to do it. It's like something like this. From um, user where 1 equals 1. This is usually an SQL injection attack. If you type this, تمام, the entire application is going to fall if the developers decided that anything that is going to be written in the form is going to be fetched and inserted immediately without a mediator, inserted immediately into the entity. If this is the case, if you have this kind of connection, usually this attack is going to work. تمام, and this is not something that you want. So security-wise, you need to have controllers. And this is another point that you can mention in your report. تمام? So to, look, to take a look at it, these are the correct associations. Boundary should never con uh, contact or communicate with the entity directly. تمام? Okay. 
So the first refactor, how things should look like. This is my current got object account that I decided to insert all of the new use cases into it. Register, login, add interests, and add personal information and the updates as well. Tamam? After the refactoring into an entity, making this just an entity, remember, we said that an entity contains only attributes, so I'm just going to leave the attributes. Zay oh, um, If you have getters and setters, صح? we have getter, get username, get users, set user, get logged in, and remove any other business related use case from the entity. So this is our first refactor. Time. Time. You will see what this looks like in code in action in just a second. I just want to give you the idea first. Time. How do you get that? Let's talk about the controllers. Uh, some books refer to as what's the control. Time. The controller refer to the logic of the business use cases, the core functionality. Time. Time. Each core functionality is implemented separately as a single responsibility in a class. This is it. This is the take here. Tamam? If you have a use case, create a class for it. This class is a controller for the use case. Tamam? So for every for every use case, we have a controller class. For every use case, we have a controller class. Tamam? This would sound like too much work to do. Tamam? And we were going to have, يعني, if you have, I don't know, if you have 10 use cases, you have 10 controller classes. This is pretty much يعني, too much work, right? I know it can be too much work, but this is the correct way to structure the code via the ECB if we're following the pattern correctly. Okay. Okay. This can be easily derived via a use case diagram. This is why I told you, if you want to know the controller classes, okay, just create a use case diagram as a sketch and refer to it later on. Okay. So, um, before we take a look at the controllers, just a discussion here, which layer should the controller be belonging to? We said the controller refers to the logic of the business use case. صح? So this belongs to what? in the folder of the business logic. So let's derive the use cases or the controllers for the use cases for the account. We said that the account has how many use cases? These six use cases. So the login register, the interest, and the personal information. So this is the controllers of the account class. Let's create a controller for each class. So this means you are going to create a login controller for this class, a register controller for this use case. Um, add, add, add personal information to profile. This is a class, this is not a method. Okay? You are creating a class, a controller class for every use case, named after the name of the use case. Okay? Same thing here, update personal information of profile controller for this one and so on. Okay? The second refactor, we said that this is the gut object without ECB. After applying ECB and adding controllers, this is what things should look like. This is the entity that we have created. We decided that the entity contains ABUS attributes from our database that maps to the database, so to the table in the database, and the getters and setters. So no business logic whatsoever is in here. So where do we place the business logic or the business use cases? At Fana. And these are going, the business use cases are going to be placed in a controller class. So for the login use case, I placed it, I placed it as a method inside the login controller. The other use case, which is register. I created a sign up or register controller and I placed the register method inside of it. Tamam? And of course, any helper methods that the register needs. Yeah. Tamam? Um, let's see uh, one of them, which is add interests to profile. Tamam? This is another use case. I created a controller class for it. Tamam? And I've added the method that does that, that actually does the logic for adding interests to profile. If you take a look at the attributes of the controller, the controller classes needs to be labeled like this. It needs to have um, a two angular brackets before and, uh, before and after. But look at this one. We said that there is an association, meaning that a controller should be accessed a an entity. Yani, these controllers are made for which entity? For which class entity? The account. So, so this means that if we have created multiple account controller, these are needs to be a connected or associated with the entity that we have created the controllers for. Type. So this is why this association means that there is going to be an account. Al fikra fi design issue here. There is a redundancy here. But I'm sure you have one more. But let's say that the login controller accesses the account. So this means that there is an object of account inside the login controller. And what? And the sign up controller needs the account bardo. And the add interest needs the account object. The redundant part is obvious. Al hawa iba. Yes, and no, the redundant part is usually is this this line. We are sending an entity, an object of the account entity, into this controller, into this controller, into this controller. If you don't want to look at it from 
يعني from the perspective of the attributes take it يعني from the perspective of the of the arrowheads of the lines why does every resource why does every controller needs to access the same resource في حاجة أحسن من كده we can do so much better than this اللي هي إيه هذا متخيل السولوشن اللي حاجة زي كده تبقى إيه let me rephrase what happens if you have common attributes and you want to share it with a with other classes how do you solve this using object oriented مين اللي قالها inheritance صح inheritance inheritance is basically if you have common attributes then this means what احنا ممكن نعمل ايه what can we do create a parent class صح سمي base controller and in the base controller put the common the common attributes so this is a common attribute صح put in the in the parent uh, class تمام this is a common attribute put it in the parent uh, class in the parent controller تمام and the same thing for this تمام even if you have common methods هل بص كده do you have any common methods in these child classes or child controllers بص على method do you have any redundant method يا راجل بص كويس user exist user exist is a common method between these two controllers so if I created a parent class that has the method user exist and it has the attribute of account object I can just say that these trials are going to inherit يعني, all of these a, all of these attributes and methods. Um, the controller or the control refers to the logic of each business use case. I'm just recapping what we did. Bottom line, a use case equals a controller class. For every use case, you create a controller class. What are the use cases? I don't know the use cases. Create a use case diagram. What are? The communication line following the controller. We said the controller, يعني, take a look here. The controller can access everything. The controller can access other controllers. The controller can access all entities. The controller can access all boundaries. The same thing here. We have a control class, regardless of the scope, or regardless of what is this application يعني, is doing. So the controller here is accessing all of the boundaries, and it's accessing all the entities. Entities can access controller and can access themselves. Boundary should not be able, the boundary here, should not be able to access, to communicate with another boundary. You know, it doesn't make sense say that you have Let's take a look here. Say that you have a sign-up form and a login form. Is this logical to you? No, because the, يعني, the boundaries are just يعني, the input fields. These are the input fields in the form. What does it mean whenever you say the two boundaries are communicating? This doesn't make sense. So this is wrong. So if you have a boundary class, this is wrong. This is a bad design. Boundary can communicate with only controllers. Boundary can only communicate with controllers. It should not reach out to the database at the back end. It should not be able to communicate with another forms because it's just meaningless. صح كده؟ طيب. So just to recap, what is boundaries? تمام. It represents the logic concerning fetching the data from the user interface. This can be fetching the data from a sign up form, from a login form, from an an expense form or an an expense page, and so on. صح كده؟ Usually just holds one attribute. Uh, sorry, it, it, it holds the attributes a little bit correspond to screen fields, our input fields. If you have input fields in the form, so these are the attributes that I can write here. تمام? Let's say I have, uh, I have a sign-up form that contains three attributes. This is, your, this is your class. Whether you want to have methods in the boundary class, it's totally up to you. عايز تحط method تمام? مش عايز براحتك. تمام? طيب, what methods can be inserted into the boundary? The operations corresponding a button. If you click on something, if, if, if a method is related to a single button, then you can place it here. The man. Operations that fetch the data from input fields usually deal with the routing scripts. Yani, let's say that this is a routing function. The man. This handle sign up. The man. Fetches a. Yani, you grab what happens here. And enter, you grab from form. Let's say that you have a form. And this is the form a. The, the input field of the username. So you grab the, 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 the input field the value from this input field. You do the same thing for what? You do the same thing, for example, a password, right? If you have a function that fetches things from form, fetches values from input fields from form, then you can safely يعني, assume that you can place this method inside your boundary class. Now let's take the demo. What I'm going to do, we refactor into layer architecture. I'm going to refactor into ECB into layer. In other words, we are integrating ECB into the layer architecture that we have refactored in the previous session. Let's take week 10, صح? 
Det är viktigt nog att vara viktigt då. Så andra känner till mig Abdullah, Abdurrahman, Menem, dem magis. Och dem kan ta även namel så i excuse. Inte kunde namel inte kan man excuse. Gani, Aisha, Ali, Amor, Bigad, Paris, Hana, Rahim. دانا مش موجودة محمود العوضي ماجد مروان مروان شعبان محمد شعبان محمد سلامة محمد يوسف محمد رضا السيد مصطفى عمر الجميل عمر عطية سيف سارة يوسف أبو حنا ويوسف حسن يوسف حسن موجود تمام كده طيب البرسنتج لحد دلوقتي يعني هي دي بس مش عايزين نضع فيها وقت بعد الزنك يعني هي دي دي ال overall percentage تمام بس دي لسه نقصة يعني دي محتاجة إن week eleven week twelve إنهم يبقوا كاملين فدي نقصة لحد دلوقتي عم نعم واحد وأربعين. أنت مش موجود لكتير. خلينا نشوف بعض الكتب. طيب. Now let's take a look at the code. I'm going to grab my design area. Note that we are doing something. This session is not a usual programming session. We're most likely we are designing. يعني I don't know if you heard about the term. Our Dr. Ahmed mentioned or not. You know about object-oriented programming, صح? What we are doing is essentially object-oriented. What we have done is object-oriented analysis. تمام. Analysis. How did we do the analysis? When we were talking about introducing a new requirement, and we said that if we placed everything into the account, this has got object, the class itself has got object, then we started figuring out or looking for architectural patterns that helps you encapsulate parts of the use cases in different classes. So we did the analysis. We did something called object oriented D. Design. Object oriented design essentially by redesigning or refactoring the design into multiple classes. صح كده؟ and finally the last step what we are going to do is the following إنه programming تمام؟ ماشي؟ طيب this is my current implementation I'm just going to take this part I'm just using this يعني instead of full paradigm because I have a room here to work with so let's start refactoring from the from this part from the entities so I'm just going to make this as large as possible. Nishi. Let's say that we are going to have the entities. We decided that the entities are as, as, as follows, right? The entity can be the account class. I'm going to start off with the account first. Tamam. But I'm going to name it as boundary. Tamam. But we decided that, sorry. We decided that it's going to be an entity, and we said that any entity contains attributes and a and getters and setters. But so if you have getters and setters, put it there. What getters and setters do we have? This is a business logic and chairman the entity. Bardo di ana mesh mehtaga. I think we have a couple of stuff like get users. This is a getter, and get username or maybe get click logged in. I think this is enough. So this is are the two getters that I'm going to have. Tamam. We said that an entity. Should be communicating with the data access like this. So this is my first A, my first part. I'm going to refactor the account first before doing the block. Tamam kena? Type. Let's do this in the code. So I'm just going to go to the data access layer. Remember, I'm inside the data access. Any entities are placed in the data access. So in this folder, um, let's go to the account first. So this is the account. I'm going to grab the implementation of the account from the business logic and go to my data access layer and create a folder. We name it A. Entities. El hot wadah, el font wadah, not safe. Type. So name it entities. Inside this folder, create the account a entity class. Some people would like to do the following. To name it as account entity or blog entity. Suffix the class name as with with the word entity. But I'm not going to do this. 
I'm just going to keep it as this. Okay? This is the new uh, account entity inside the entities folder, right? We decided that this should contain only what? This contains the attributes, contains getters, and sitters. Look at them. Look at them. So let's take away the register from here. Take away the user exist. This is a getter. It returns variable. So this is a getter. I need this. Huh? Take away the login. This is a setter, right? So it takes some values and sets some attributes. This is another setter, but it sets everything with none. Right? And this is another a getter. So, okay? so this is my first implementation, the entities. Okay, I'm not going to do the blog. I'm just going to take the upper portion doing the account first. I'm not going to leave this at the end. Right? Now take a look at the controllers. We decided that how many controllers are we going to have? Look at the use cases, Hannah. How many use cases do we have in the in the account? For the Anabat Hakalik, I'm not asking you the number of methods. How many concrete core functionalities, core use cases in the account? Two, which are register and login. Only two main use cases. And these were the ones depicted in the class diagram, uh, sorry, in the in the use case diagram. Login and register. Any other method are just there to help, help our functions. So based on this, let's just take this part. And let's create this in the business logic. We decided that controllers are going to be in the business logic. So I'm just going to put this part right there. With Alan and with the first A, with the first controller class that maps to the first A, to the first Matalan A. Khalan and Tiri register, to the first A, use case here register. So I'm just going to name this as um, register controller and we know that this controller is related to what entity class agama is related to the account entity class صح? so this means that we are going to connect this controller into this entity class صح كده? and this association means what this association means that the register controller needs to access the account object so we should have an account object inside of the of the register controller تمام? and instead of the data access خلي بالك ان data access ده خلاص انا يعني انا as a controller, I don't need to access the database directly. The entity is there for this reason. The entity is accessing, accessing the data access hole here. Right? So all that the controller needs is to access what? The account. This line means that there is an account object sent to the register controller. So I'm just going to update this as account object. And this is of the type account. Right? Let's say that this is the register controller. Controller. Right? How many methods should I keep inside this register controller class? How many methods related to the register uh, registration use case? Huh? Two, which are Akid register. We need this. This does the logic for the use case. We don't really need login. We don't really need check login, but we need to check if the user exists or not before signing up. So let's implement this class like that. So inside my business logic, I'm going to create a folder. Actually, you can immediately go ahead and do the following. Yani inside the business logic, you can say register controller okay. And you know that there is another a login. I'm just talking about the account, the account entity, the controllers for the account. I'm not talking about the blog yet. I don't care about the use cases for the blog. صح? So login controller. Make sure that the namings of the classes are always Pascal notation. Yani it, it starts with a capital letter. So one can say the following, and you can place any other controller in the same folder of the business logic. But this is to me is too unreadable. Like if you have, for example, let's take a look at the blog. I'm not going to do it, but I'm just yani assuming that we can cre create controllers for the blog. So in the blog, you have a use case for getting all of the blogs, which is equivalent to viewing the blog box. If we have a use case for viewing blog posts, you, have, you can have a controller for it. Huh? So essentially, in the business logic, I can add view blogs controller. Huh? Now, let me ask you a question. If you started creating a controller class for every use case and placing it into the business logic layer or folder, is this readable to you? On the current run, it is fine because the product is not that big. But the more use cases that we have, the more use case controller classes we will be having, the more files that is going to be inside this business logic, 
you will lose the concerns here. Every concern or every responsibility in this folder is not cohesive. You have too many things. You cannot reach for a certain controller uh, classes, right? So to me, personally, I would go the, uh, with the following approach. I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to name it what? Account controller. And place any business, uh, business use case controllers for the account entity inside this folder. So any account related controllers, put them there. Any account, or blog related controllers, let's create another one. So any blog related controllers is going to be placed here. Let's take the login controller and place it here. Let's take the register controller and place it in the account controllers. I'm not going to implement the view blogs controller now. And um, let's start with the first one. I'm going to put this, let's start with the register. And let's take the, the old account.py, which is the object class. This is the gut object class. This is where everything is placed in the same script without ACB. Got object without ACB. Okay? And this is my register controller. Let's start off with just writing the name of a register controller. And let's say that it's going to have yani, um, a constructor. I don't really care about the constructor yet, but let's just create it for the time being. What methods you should include in the register controller? What are the methods that we need in the register controller? Omar, what are the methods that we need in the register controller? Look at the method here. Register. You need the register method. You need the register logic صح? inside the register controller. It makes sense. صح? So let me go to the old account class and fetch the register implementation and paste it here. This is the first thing. Okay, take a look at the register now. تمام? The register contains what, يا جماعة? How many dependencies we can see inside the register? يعني how many other methods does the register needs to access? Look at the definition. We can see in the line هنا, in line 9, that register needs what? It uses user exists inside the definition, صح? So it needs the user exists to be aware. يعني to be placed in somewhere in the, inside the script. So I'm going to take the user exists with me. Okay. ماشي? Another look, let's see the following. We need the timber users. تمام? Timber user is an, is an attribute inside the account. Inside the account. صح? Timber user is an attribute inside the account. Class. مزبوط? So essentially, we need to access the account object to get what? To get timber users. مزبوط? So this means that we are going to implement this association. See this association here? خلينا لو نهلك بلون تاني كده. تمام? This associ association right here. Let's implement this one. The, the register controller needs in the register function or method needs what the timber user's attribute, which is found inside a. I'm not going to but let's just write it. Which is just يعني, a bunch of rows, a bunch of records from the database. So it's a list by the end of the day. Okay. We need the timber users from the account entity. So let's do the association. This association is reversibly like this. Account object is being sent to the constructor of a of the register controller. Mazwood? So the register of the, con the register controller home, the constructor, this is the constructor. Just do the dependency injection. No other dependency injection is basically association. In the previous labs. And inject the object, the, the account controller, sorry, the account entity object. So I'm just going to say the account object. Look at that. Once you are going to receive the account object, click on that. We store it in a variable. Then, if we take a look at the entities, the account entities, make sure to follow the If we take a look at the following, register controller needs to access the, the account object, so, which is basically a, an entity. So taking a look at the entity, we have the table, the timber user attribute. We can just assume the following. If I have the account object, I can access from the account object the timber users. We can do the append. Had him possible. applicable. I told you from day one we are teaching mindsets in this course. I'm not giving you something that is going to this is exactly what I'm going to see in my project. If I now copy paste, it's not going to work this way. You need to understand the mindset to be able to implement this in your project. تمام؟ عشان كده I'm reiterating so many things. I want to make sure that everyone is understanding. يعني فاهم الناس فاهم اللي تعمل حد وقتي؟ تمام؟ 
قبل ما اعمل الحركه دي ريجستر كنترولر كانت بتقول لك انه ات نيدز ريجستر ميثود ان ذا ريجستر كنترولر نيدز تو اكسس ايه ذا تيمبر يوزرز طب تيك لوك دو وي هاف ا تيمبر يوزر اتريبيوت ان ذس كلاس لا بس يو نو ذات ا كنترولر كان اكسس ايه all of the attributes from an entity so just send the, this is the line this is the meaning of the line association send the entity that contains all of the needed attributes to the controller that's what I'm going to so how do we send the entity object via yeah, the dependency injection De injecting just, just a, a object that you need the entity object that you need so, and I stored it in a variable that's it so, okay. so once we have the entity object I know that any account entity object is going to contain a variable a called a reusers now let's Take a look. Tala keda. Let's remember a dear friend keda of ours. That is called the law of Demeter. Had the fact that the law of Demeter that we talked about earlier keda. The law of Demeter. Law of Demeter essentially was talking about one uh, member access. You know, it was saying that you should not be having too many dots and too many chaining in your code. Let's take a look here. How many dots do we have? How many accesses are we doing? How many accessing are we doing from the controller here? Sivak Mindi, neglect this part. I don't care about the self. Starting from here. From the account object, I'm accessing. This is the first access. This is the first dot. So I'm accessing what? The temporary user. So and then I'm accessing another method that is called append. So we have more than one. So after the, yani this dot is acceptable. Anything after this dot, if you find another dot in this area, this is violating the law of the meter. But we're going to let this pass for one reason. And no, append is a built-in method. Yani if you go to, yani this is a list by the end of the day. So it's just a list. And we know in Python, lists can have append. So it's not something that I defined as a user. It's not user-defined method. So we can let this slide. Tamam? Ta'al nshuf law of Demeter hena. In the C law of Demeter, do we abide by it or do we violate it in this line? Now take a look. Tamam? First of all, um, the register controller should not have the data access object. So, do you see any attribute called data access object for users here? No, but it can be found in the entity. Mazboot? This is the entity. Okay. But the data access object be found in the entity. Mazboot? Okay. So, if I have the data access, or, or sorry, the account object entity, which I do, I can access immediately data access object. Now let's take a look. Do we violate the law of the meter? How many accessing are, is happening here? How many things are being chained? Min awl here. Talata. Tab adili kada. How many things are being chained? How many dots starting this line? How many dots do we have? Two. So, so the first access is from account object. I'm trying to access a the data access object. This one contains all of the good yani CRUD operation. This contains all of the read, write, all of these good stuff. So, okay? so from the CRUD object, I'm accessing the write method. The difference between this and the previous line is that the write operation is user defined. We created this. We created this method. It's not a built in in Python. Okay? So in this case, after the first dot, we have another dot. So this is violating a violates law of the meter. Okay? Type how to solve it? Yeah, solving law of the meter, I will violation that using just delegation function. This is always the solution. Okay? Of how to create a delegation method. And at the final, we decided that any entity can contain the attributes. We did this, right? The attributes the account we yani we we we, we can contain the attributes we contain the getters and setters plus we said that the entity can contain a delegation method this is the rule that we are working on so let's say the following how to create a delegation method how to find tomorrow understand this once and it's going to be easy later on so let's create a delegation method inside the entity who is the entity henna take a look at the left hand side henna the left hand side of the dot and the right hand side of the dot of the first dot where is the entity which one is the entity which one is the entity class? This is the left hand side and this is the right hand side. Which one is the entity class? So, which one is the entity class in this line? Whenever, why are we violating Aslan law of the meter? Because you have, after the first dot, you have seen another dot. 
We love the meter is saying that you need only one dot per, per access. You should not have multiple dots or you are violating. This is not clean code. So how can I? I'm asking you on the left hand side of the first dot, right? This is the left hand side and this is the right hand side. Which one is the entity class? We only discussed one entity class so for Malco PA. Account. Tamam? So which one is the account class or the account object? Mesh, mesh, okay. So okay. So this is the account entity on the left hand side, right? So what I'm going to do if I see a, yani another dot after the first dot, so this is the second dot after the first dot. Sahagada? Take anything after the first dot. Copy base. Let's just copy the line to see the difference. Okay. With the delegation and without. I mean, this is with the delegation and this is without. Huh? So take any code after the first dot. Get that? Okay. And let's say. Make it with. Uh, okay. So take any any code after the first dot. Okay. Place it in a method. Let's call this method what? Access. Right? What are we trying to achieve? Hannah? We are trying to write. So. And yani from the CRUD, we are trying to write. So I'm going to place this code that is after the first dot inside the method inside my account entity class. This method is going to be named as access write. Okay. Take a look at the account class, the account entity class. Do you have access right in of AM again? We didn't implement it yet. So let's add the, the first delegation function, which is access write. What is this method should include? It includes the part that we have cut off, this part after the first dot. Okay? That access object dot write. So I'm just going to place this here. Tamam? And it's going to tell you, and I don't know what is what is this one. You just need to say that it is there, tamam? but you need to proceed it with itself if you're using Python. Tamam? This is my delegation function. The question, why is this a delegation function? Because it doesn't do anything on its own. It doesn't have any logic, right? It uses the logic from a different method. Layer right. We're just using it as a mediator to access what? To access the right method from the data access object, from the CRUD object. Tamam? We're to find out it's right to have delegation functions inside entity classes. Our methods. This is the first refactor. Tamam? Now, let me ask you a question. Do we need to return anything? Yani, do I need to return anything here? Yani you are inserting into a database, so you, should you expect a return value whenever you insert it into a database? La, you expect a return value if you were reading or selecting from a database, huh? so this is not actually needed. Tamam? Taib, let's continue. Um, this is the refactor of register method. There is something that I've missed here. There is another refactor that we need to include in this method. What is wrong? What is wrong in this method? It's going to throw an error. It's going to tell you that you are trying to access an attribute or a method that is not inside the register controller class. So which one is it? What are we trying to access from the register method that is not inside the entire register controller class? It is in line 11, by the way. Yeah. What is the thing you to access from the register? It's not in the register controller class. Eh? That? variable. This is just a variable. My user exists. No, user exists is here. Yani self with user meaning that self means that in the same class you should find user exist. Sah? La la la. User exists. We did not place it into into the account class. لأن إحنا قلنا إنه this has logic. Sah? إحنا عايزين نحط أي حاجة in the entity classes in the account entity. Place any getters and setters. يعني any dummy any dummy functions حطها هنا getters and setters any attributes that's it but the user exists we decided that it is being used by the register so this is why I يعني accommodated it حطيتها I mean I place it with the register in the register controller class in this line in this line there is something that is not existent in the register controller class what get users get users self meaning that in this in this class صح كده Self here means in the same class. So in the same class, do you see a method called get users? La, this get user is a, is a getter inside a inside the entity account, the, the account entity. So you can see it here. So in this area. So this means from the controller, if you want to access the get users, 
D, you should say that account dot get users so from the account object. Thank you, Aisha. Dot get users, and this is the solution. This is refactoring for the register controller. What? Huh? Okay. So for the user exists map, we need to refactor this as well. But what, what is the issue? Where, where, where are we violating the law of Demeter here? And first of all, let's do the, the refactoring. You need the data access object, sir, which is not inside the controller, but the CRUD object can be found inside the entity. And the entity is being injected here, is being passed to the constructor here. So I can say you can find this object from this, you can find this um, object, the CRUD object from the account entity. Man? Type. The question, Tani, again, Shabab, we are violating the law of the meter or not? Yes or no? In this line, are we violating a law of the meter? Do we have more than one dot per access? Yes. So, how do we solve it? Via delegation. Where do you put the, 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 the delegation? Inside your entity classes. Amen. So, how do we do the delegation again? This is the first dot, the first access. Amen. This is the entity class. Amen. Anything after the first dot, if you see another second dot, this violates the law of Demeter. So what do we do after the first dot? On the left-hand side, all of this part, I'm going to take it away. Let me just copy this first. So I'm going to take everything after the first dot and say that I'm going to place this in a method that I'm going to create now on the fly that is going to be inside the account entity class. This method, what are we trying to do? We are trying to find by. I'm just going to name it access. Find by. What did find by needed to take? It needs to take key and value and list. So I'm going to leave the exact implementation the same as it is. So key, value, and a list. So take a look at the entity. You said that the entity now should have access, fi access find by. Do we have access find by yet? No. So it's implemented. Access find by. And place the same logic that we have after the first dot from here, this part. So this is my second delegation function inside this entity class. To, right, to make Python just yani, accommodate the signatures. So this is the signature of the access find by, right? We said it takes three things. So the definition should map to the what the function call. This is the function call, and this is a this is the, the definition. Okay? And we're good to go. Now, let me ask you a question. Do we need to return anything? Does this function return anything or not? Answer me, Aisha. Does this function return anything or not? What do you think? You find things in the tables in the database. So you should fetch them. You should retrieve them. Then the answer is obviously what? Yes, it returns. This returns something. So I need to say return. Missing the return in delegation functions is going to be so hard to debug. You're not going to understand what is the problem. This is why I'm telling you, in any delegation, check is the delegation here. What are what is the responsibility? The responsibility is inserting into a database, like the, the like the right in this case. You know, you don't need a return here. Then, is the responsibility is finding, fetching, selecting? Of course, you need a return. Then, hello, good. Um, so this is essentially the update. Now we did the register controller. Okay? Let's do the login controller. I'm going to just cut the ties for the blog for now. I'm just working on the, in this part first. Okay? Hopefully this is. Uh, so this is the login controller. How many methods do we need to take from the original God object account that is not following the ECB? How many methods do you need from here into this use case controller? Huh? Two, which are these? So, I think I think we need four. So, yeah, and we need to check if the user exists or not before logging in. So, so actually, this is yeah. And let me say something. Check logged in. We decided that um, check logged in is just a, a getter. Yeah, and you can say because we have a logged in variable, a boolean. So this is just a saying. It's the same as saying the following. Just the same as saying get logged in. So this is a getter by the end of the day. And we decided that getters should exist in the entity. So I'm not going to put the getter here. So we need just the login and the user exists. Okay? Now let's do the connection from the controller to the entity. Okay? Let's implement this association, which is in green. Okay? Before I implement, what are the redundant pieces? 
look at these two controllers. What are the redundant beasts? Ah, by the way, the controller should not have the attributes because uh, إحنا, إحنا the attributes are inside what the entities. Huh? So we don't really need any of these attributes. It's, it's inside the entity as well. So what are the redundant pieces? Look at the controller of the register and the controller of the login use case. What is the redundant pieces type from the attribute perspective from this section? We have, yes, we will be sending the same account object to both controllers. Look at this section from the methods. What are the redundant pieces here? The user exists method. So, how Type. We will see inheritance in just a second. But let's first, for the first let's implement the login controller without inheritance. So, so, this is the login controller. I'm just going to place it here. And let me just say class login controller. We have a constructor. We don't really know what's going to hold or receive but let's say the methods what are the methods that we agreed to put in the login controller login and user exist let's go to, to the original uh, the not refactored ecb version of the account let's take from here what the login and let's take let's take what um user exists okay Now let's put this side by side. Yes, we said that we need account object, right? The account object, the same account object that is being passed to the register controller, we need to pass it to the login controller. I'm just going to inject it via dependency injection, inject it as a dependency to the constructor of the login controller. So I need the same account object. Okay. We're good to go. Now I'm going to put both controllers side by side. Get the entity for now. Let's put both controllers side by side like this. So this is the log, um, this is the login controller and this is the register controller. This is the redundant piece. This is the first redundant area. The same constructor or the constructor of both classes are taking the same account object. We have this is the first common attribute, redundant attribute. For the method, we have the same user exist method here and there. So how Type. Before we do the inheritance, let's just refactor this into ECB. Now, we said that the login needs to access user exist. This is true. User exist is here. All good. Now, let's see. User uh, or the login controller needs to access timber user. Do we see any timber user in this uh, in this constructor area? No. This can be accessed from where? The same concept, meaning in the entity account. Huh? Okay. Another thing, you have set user, which is a setter. And we said that a setter as let's just say the account from the entities so from the account entity you can see that there's a method setter that is called set user so this can be accessed also from me from the account entity class now let me ask you is this violating the law of the meter or not this line any line that you see multiple chainings multiple dots ask yourself this question are we violating the, the law of the meter we don't care about the first self dot. بالضبط. So we only have one dot, so we are abiding by the law of the meter. Same same thing, we are abiding by the law of the meter. Now let's, let's take a look at this one. Refactor this. Data access object that contains all of the user columns or user rows, user records. This can be accessed from where? From the account entity. From the account entity. So we can say this can be found from the account object. Now, take a look. Is this violating the law of the meter or not? Wahid, it mean one, two, two dots. So it violates them. So let's create a delegation function. How is the rule goes by? It's the same exact thing, by the way. We created a delegation function inside account class, and we named it a access find by. And access find by initially does anything on the right of the second dot. Right on the right of the first dot manage. It access it access the CRUD object and then it access the find by. This is exactly what we need. So we can replace all of this part with what access find by, which we have created for whom for the user exists inside the register controller. This is the redundant area. Actually, we can just take this part. Can It's the same thing. Okay. Okay. Essentially, we are done with the refactoring. Something that we have forgot, Bardo, and we have to get users. This can be found in the entity. So I should say 
account object dot المنظر ده هكذا جميل now this is redundant code if we have common methods common attributes it's very good and it's استخدم to use what it's actually recommended to use a inheritance زي ما عبد الله قال يعني تمام so to use inheritance we are going to do the following تمام ممكن الناس يعني people who worked with Dart maybe they will be familiar with this because in static languages this is يعني معناها ايه الحركه دي في الجري ايه اللي حصل No, no, this is, I think it's really good. Well, I'm not going to do it. Relax, the word that you hear from you is better than the Python. Did you get the point? I didn't mean to do it. Okay, okay, okay. So let's create a parent controller containing all of the common attributes and methods. So I'm just going to create this parent controller, parent controller class, and I'm going to name it base account controller. Okay. So many implementation over the internet. In Dart, in PHP, in, 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 in actually برضو in Java, and you will see something called base controller. You will see something called base controllers in the industry. Base controllers, the idea about base controller <coughs> is that this is the parent controller class that contains common attributes and common methods. This is it. So let's say that you need this and this from the parents. Huh? So you just make the connection. Huh? This is going to be inherited. تمام؟ فخلينا نعمل دي بس أو نزل دي تحت. مظبوط؟ ونعمل كده برضو. So this is my inheritance. So if these are inheriting from the parent, then there is no need to write the inherited attributes nor the inherited methods. مش كده؟ يعني we don't really need to write the inherited attributes or the inherited methods. The parent is going to contain only the common method, which is user exists. So I'm just going to remove it from the child and this other child as well. تمام؟ There is another thing from the design here that is wrong. We need to refactor. Hello, eh? في حاجة ناقصة يعني في حاجة غلط يعني بس كده على الحتة دي. Look at this part. What is wrong with the design here? In fin, في دول there is no attributes here. لا no attributes is fine. يعني no attributes here indicates that the child is going to inherit this attribute from the parent. So it's fine. So we don't really need to repeat it. But there is something wrong in this area. Look at the relationships, the associations. Aywa. Sah. Thank you. Why do you need two associations if there is a parent? If the parent can access the entity, this means any child can access the entity. Malbut keda. But design-wise, this is the perfect. Bizarre. These are the childs that are inheriting from the parent. This equi is equivalent to saying that there is a line from here and there is a line from here. Okay. So to do this, to do inheritance, um, first of all, let's create the base controller, the base count controller that is going to just aggregate the common attributes and methods. As active count, I'm just going to take the area here and say class. Let's put a yes. Let's take a look at the the login and the register. Okay. So let's take the common parts first. Uh, first, and put it in the in the parent. This is the parent class. The parent base controller. So what are the common attributes from the login controller and the uh, register controller? Bussa maay el login attributes el common attributes. The account object that we used to send. تمام؟ This is equivalent to the two lines that we have deleted. تمام؟ The two lines دول معناهم إنه we are sending an account object, an account entity object to this one, and account entity object برضو to the other controller. صح كده؟ So we can just say that take the constructor from any of them and put it in the constructor of the of the parent. تمام؟ طيب حلو جدا. If we did this, we don't really need the constructor in these. خلاص مش محتاجين the account object. Don't really need the account object in any of these controller files, huh? but we need to say that these are inheriting. To know how inheritance is implemented in Python, keep your eyes open. عشان there's going to be a lot of action دلوقتي. تمام? Okay. So please, يعني don't miss this part. How to web? How to implement inheritance? Your eyes on it. عشان بس إيه يعني عشان ما ما تفتكش الحيطة دي. How to implement inheritance? بقى هنعمل إيه؟ 
كل الحكاية to implement inheritance to say that this is a child inheriting from this parent all that you need to do is do a parenthesis after the class name inside the parenthesis put a the parent the parent, the parent class name تمام? which is in this case what the base controller تمام? it's going to tell you I don't know where is this implemented so we just need a an import first so we're going to say this import is going to look really ugly so we're going to say from business logic from the account controllers from the base account controller script import a the account controller class base class تمام? let me just tell you something whenever you go to the industry and this was a shock for me when i started working yani at the company um, I saw a file that has, yani how many chaining do we have here? One, two, so? I saw a file at the start of the file, I had it has a couple of imports. One of the imports, actually a couple of the imports, had four chains, four dots. I thought that this is what is going on. How are you going to keep track of this? The point is that we implement the ECB or architectural patterns. This is what I understood later on, Yani. And we implement these to make the tracking easy. You don't track for the from the imports. The tracking happens whenever you look at the class diagram, whenever you look at the applet pie. We didn't do the applet pie, but remember the slide that I've mentioned. Anna? If you want to know how the applet pie is going to look like, okay? the tracking happens in this area, not from the import. You should know whenever you see this. You would, whenever you see the driver code, you will have an idea about the implementation in the back end, right? So if I saw, if I didn't see the class diagram, for example, yeah, and I saw the driver code, the app that by, and I see that there is an object created being sent to account. So there's an association between account and data access. An object created being sent to block. So there's an association between block and account. So another object is created from data access and being sent to, to, to block. So there's an association between block and data access. So the tracking happens from the part of the system initialization, the part where you create the object. Not from the import. So, bottom line, what I learned yeah, the hard way, the more the imports, the more chaining you have in the imports, the more indication that you are writing clean code. Tamam? This means that you are separating everything into a layer, into a folder. You have so much organization. So, the more chaining in the import, the more organization the organization that you had. Meji? I had anyone who tells you otherwise from any university? Ollu? ما مش هنسأل لنا لا أنت غلط مش عايز أشتري عشان بس أنا من ريكورد يعني تمام بقول لسه مش عايز أشتري خليني أرجع أدت لازم أرجع أدت بعد من ريكورد يا عبد الرحمن بقول لهم أنت قلت لهم إيه بعد ما خلص تمام طيب ف this is the first import so if you have the base if you imported this just say that this is going to inherit this child is going to inherit from the parent and if we can inherit from the parent this means that i have access to any attributes that the parent has so if the parent has account object this means see python is not throwing any errors under this line because it access it can access it from the parent مش كده صح طيب um, we did the same um, uh, edit here in the register and in the login what is left is that what is another common method is this one صح so take this one and remove it from the other controller as well and place it fair place it in the parent like this then so whenever you take a look at the classes that are inheriting from the parent base account controller you should know that this is accessible if it's not defined here in the class namespace of the login controller this means it's accessible from the parent it is in the, in the namespace of the parent same thing goes for the um the account object the attributes time can i omar um, one last thing, we forgot to do the inheritance for the for the register controller. So we can say that the inheritance begin to is account controller. We inherited from the base account controller, so we have user exist, we have the account object. All good, all good. We finished the area here, so this is my design. Again, we are doing a, we are doing object oriented. Now we are doing just this part. We finished the analysis. خلاص. تمام. We are doing the design and the implementation. Believe me, this is the way to go. يعني حتى if you wrote some code, try to create a class diagram and try to follow up with it. يعني edit something in the class diagram, go back to the code as much as possible. تمام. Um, 
um, so this is the uh, controllers. Finally, the boundaries. تمام? The catchphrase is that for every controller, we have a boundary. How do you know? You have a sign up functionality, a sign up use case, صح? And you have a form for the sign up. You have a login use case or a login controller, صح? And you have a form for the login. This is the rule here, تمام? So I'm just going, instead of user interface, I'm just going to say, that this is going to be a boundary okay? and I'm going to name it as um, uh, let's create the form the login form first so we can actually call it the login form okay? or oh, uh, login UI whatever I'm just going to name it as login UI the following okay? And we said that the login UI should contains the attributes, the input fields, so the input fields that you take from the from the interface, from the user interface. So the input fields are what do you need? Password. Okay. Okay. Username. I don't think we take the email. لا أنا أعملها بس password username. If you take any more inputs, you can include it. Okay. Now. Our boundary is not communicated with the blog anymore. So this is the old boundary. The old boundary is a very good object, a very big good object class that is communicated with the communicating with every class. Okay? This is not the case anymore. So I just want to communicate with the account. This is related to the login controller. So it's related to the login controller. So I just want to communicate with what the login controller is. So instead of accessing, Shabab. And instead of accessing the block, I don't really need this, so I'm just going to remove it. Okay? There's something wrong with this class diagram, which is what is wrong in this class diagram? It has so many methods that is not related to logging in. So, so first of all, this is the register inputs. We're not taking the register inputs anymore. Anything here? Logout. يعني you يعني you لا 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 صح صح يعني انتو you you mentioned something that I didn't want to talk about but see that in my use case diagram I did not log out as a use case so because if I did I have عندي three classes of controllers and I just want to keep things slightly minimized واحد ممكن يقولي انت كده أصلا ذات نفسك مش بتفولو سينجل ريسبونسابيلتي so in this case I'm just going to يعني همشي فيها كده باعتبار إنه if you take a look at the log out أصلا يعني take a look at the log out take a look at the logic of the log out Right? The logic of the logout is just a sitter. He a sitter function. So it is not really needed in Node to create an entire controller class and place this method inside of it. It's just a sitter that sets every, everything with none. Waslo? So I'm going to accommodate the logout. I'm going to leave the logout as a as a sitter function inside the entity. Right? مش هحطها في login controller. Right? I'm not going to place it in the login controller. I'm going to, I'm just going to leave it in the entity class, the account entity class. تمام كده؟ معايا؟ عايشة. Okay. Uh, so if we, this is, يعني عوض is محمود يعني comment. If you had a logout use case, it is better to add another controller for the logout. It's going to be three childs inheriting from the base controller. Okay. But anyways, I need the. Let's leave the login inputs and login and logout. I don't really create a post. It's not the blog. It's not related to the blog controller. This is not. But yes, we can actually get the current logged in user, right? Uh, and check and check uh, the the the, uh, the logged in user if it's if he's logged in or not. But we don't really need the block. Okay? There is another issue. There is another issue with this class. There is another issue that is highlighted in red in this class. An account. Yes. What does this mean? What does this mean if you have an account object inside the boundary? Relationship wise, if I have this attribute, this means that I need to draw a line, an association line between A, between my boundary and what? Account entity class, right? So this يعني this means the following, صح? Because my lines should map to the attribute notation here. تمام? تمام? This means that I need to have an account object from the entity account class present or apparent in my boundary class. This is the meaning of the attribute. But following the rules of the ACB pattern, is this actually accurate or not? 
it's not accurate because we said that a boundary should never be able to directly access what the entity was good together but instead we're going to stick with only from the boundary accessing the controller and from the controller whether from the controller itself or from the parent of the controller accessing what the entity تمام okay right. let's create the login ui oh, actually we can we can do the following we can create the the sign up boundary the sign up ui or the sign up form in your form if you have a form that doesn't really يعني you don't know what are the methods, methods that should be placed placed in it عادي omit all of the methods but it's really important to يعني do you know that you have an account um, a controller account object sorry we didn't do this we need to have to denote that we have an attribute of the controller object and the attributes in the input fields that's important this is what matters تمام so we said that the login ui can access the controller object so i'm just going to put this in and this in عشان ايه for readability and let's say that from the account controller object or from the boundary we can access the controller object and this is account this is register controller تمام this is of the type of register controller class خلينا نسمي register controller احسن this is better register controller object تمام كده same thing هنا but here the sign up يا جماعة ركزوا معايا this is not the register صح we're in the login so this should be connected to the login controller this is the login UI so this is the login controller تمام نفس الفكرة the same thing but for the sign up form register controller object this is of the type of register this means that there is in the namespace of this design of this class diagram there is a class called register controller somewhere that's the data type the defined user defined data type تمام what methods do we need the same attributes the same input fields plus any method that we have previously did we delete it any method that was that was related to the registering so register inputs and the register i think that's that's it right okay. okay we need a line from this one to the register controller we can remove this one so this is my current implementation my current design تمام كده حلو جدا um, let's implement the, the, the user interfaces يعني hopefully I get to do this in 10 minutes so let me just close everything so this was in the presentation layer صح so I'm going to go to my presentation layer and create a folder you can actually create a folder called boundary or boundaries so i'm just going to do that because we are going to have multiple forms multiple boundaries تمام so i'm just going to create a folder called account boundary تمام so from account boundary we can have the form of sign up form client me register ui the pi and this is login ui the pi تمام Let's start with the easiest one, which is the register. Then, this is the constructor. We're going to see what it's going to take in just a second. Now, let's take a look at the old implementation of user interface. This is the one. I'm going to put this here. So, the register UI needs to access as we have designed Hannah going to access what the, the register UI the sign up yani it's going to access hand register it's going to have hand register inputs and hand register okay. Okay. so this is hand register inputs and this is hand register um, now take a look we said that the login UI is going to be connected or associated with the login controller 
this makes sense any boundary should have access to its controller so so i'm going to say that this association is going this way this is the direction reversibly this means that a login controller or sorry a register controller is being sent to the sign up ui this is the one that we are working on so, let's say reversibly this is going to receive or be injected to right it's going to be having a register controller once you have this save it in a variable okay and now you want to access the register so let me remind you of how the register controller looks like okay So this is the register UI. Tamam. Okay, so this is what the register controller looks like. So, register controller has the register. So if you are executing the register from the boundary, you can safely assume that this register can be found on the controller that is sent to the boundary via this constructor. So, so from the controller, I'm just going to say access register, and that's it. Tamam. As simple as this. Maybe. I don't know about the kid and I'm login. Let's create the login. Okay. So let's let me just take the boilerplate from here. And I'm just going to call it login. And this is login controller. Ah, because the login UI is connected to the login controller. Right? Okay. Now, let's take the methods from the original user interface code that is related to the login. It's going to be slightly annoying. Now, take a look here. Do we have any methods that is being called in, in, this, in this method? No. Let's take a look at this definition. We have dependencies. This is the first dependency. right? So we need to access login. And you know, from the controller of the login, so fetching the login controller, you know that there is a login method implemented in the login controller. So I And I have the login controller being sent to me in the constructor. So take this login controller and all that you can do is access the login format. Okay? This is the first edit. Okay? Are we violating any law of the meter here? No, only one dot. Take a look at the second one. You need to access the logout. This is where things are going to be chained endlessly. Now, you know that lo logout is implemented where? In the account so you know that account is implemented uh, or logout sorry is implemented in the account so and for the login you can only access what the controller directly and from the controller you can access what the account object which is being fetched from the parent yani, or inherited from the parent so one would say okay you need this from the entity which is inside this entity so go to the controller first then pass by the entity, then go fetch your logout method. Okay, this is correct, but clean code wise, this violates what law of the meter. Okay, and the so or the solution for this is a delegation method. Can you tell me what is the delegation method? Had the only kid the steps? Can someone tell me what are the steps to create this delegation method? I mentioned it multiple times. Yeah. Yes. عليها درجة دي عندكم لازم تعملوها. It has a mark and you need to implement it. This one's يعني تمام. So how? Hey. واخد بالك عبدو عبدو بيعمل إيه بالظبط في البروجكت؟ بس كم حاجة في البروجكت؟ طيب. Let me answer this. So to know how to create a delegate a delegation method, first of all you need to have multiple dots, more than one. This is the first. This is the second. Go to the first dot. تمام. And then fetch or grab anything after the first dot, like this, tamam? And say that this is going to be placed in a method inside the class that is on the left-hand side of the dot. Tamam? The class that is on the left-hand side of the dot, there will be a method. There will be a method. It's called what? We'll call it anything. We're going to do what here? We're going to access logout, right? We'll call it delegation access logout, tamam? This is the part actually that I've commented on. This is the part that I've cut, tamam? So now go to the entity. Which is this one, and add a delegation. Oh, sorry, a delegation. Then, where where should we place the delegation? Dot. So the delegation should be from the from the controller, not in the entity. So, so go to the controller and add a delegation, which is the one that we have written here. 
match the function call and name it access logout تمام just put the part that we have cut اللي هو that was on the right hand side of the first dot تمام and this count object can be accessed from the current namespace of the current class namespace تمام and this is essentially it we don't really need to return anything تمام this this does not initially it does not return anything تمام كده take a look at the second one click logged in so check logged in is a getter that is inside my entity so here so so to access this you can say the same thing from the controller access the entity and from the entity access what check logged in um sorry we are here so and check logged in from the controller access the entity and from the entity access the check logged in dots yes then violating the loading meter take the part after the to the right side to the right hand side of the dot tamam this part tamam and place it in a method that is going to be inside the class on the left hand side of the dot so inside login controller object we are going to add another delegation what are we trying to achieve we are trying to access check logged in so i'm just going to name it access check logged in هو مين اللي بيلف ال بصوا انا خدت الاتننس ف you're not interested you can leave انا بقول الكل because recently I've been sensing this vibe and honestly I hate it we I'm doing this for your career and I'm doing this for you for the academic part هنا عشان تاخد الدرجات تمام لو مش عايز تفهم او مش فاهم there is a recording ارجع اتفرج عليه تمام؟ if you're bored you can leave خلاص انا خد الاتنس تمام؟ طيب طيب so this is the delegation function we created click logged in let's place it هنا access click logged in this is defined in the login controller class تمام؟ and then this should have the definition the part on the left hand side of the first dot which we have commented out here تمام؟ And we're good to go. But remember, from the entity, check logged in returns something. So original check logged in returns something. So this means that delegation should return whatever the original is going to be returning as well. Okay. Now, current login logged in username. This is the last one. So the username is an attribute is inside a the entity. So okay. So we need to access it from the entity. But the boundary cannot access the entity directly. But it can access it from the controller. To the entity, to the attribute. Same thing. This is the first dot. This is the second dot. Do a delegation. Put it inside a login controller object. تمام. So take this part to the right hand side of the dot. Name it access. Username. Ah, this is yeah. This is a method. صح كده. Define the method inside the controller, the login controller object. Access. log username like that so we want to fetch the username from there and return this username that's it تمام to the moment of truth let's try to run this we hopefully يعني نبقى يعني عاقدين الامل كده and nothing goes wrong تاني كده Oh. Um, لا شاور انت بتتكلم على ايه بالظبط اخر جزء اللي هو اكسس يوزر نيم ده اه اخر حاجه this is the last this is the implementation of the boundaries خلاص كده تمام يعني في حاجه بس عشان بس تبقى فاهم we didn't do the following we didn't do the, the, the lower part of the class diagram اللي هو البلوك علي تعال انت عارف ان انا بحبك يعني بس الصوت كان عارف لو حد بيتكلم بس يعني الصوت بيرن فاهم so we didn't do the lower part تمام i will give you an activity it's totally up to you ان انت عايز تعملها ولا لا كده كده هيبقى في another in the next session i'm going to do it to refactor the block into a into acb تمام to do a controller for every use case in the inside the block right so inside the block we have two use cases so controller class for this controller class for this one تمام 
okay. and create a boundary for each controller of the uh, blog controllers, the main. And then we have an entity of the blog that contains only the attributes and getters and setters and delegation. The main killer. Okay. So I'm not going to do the last one. Let's just yeah, you have the first one is enough to make things make sure that everything is working. I'm just going to go to the app by the wiring application. Let me just yeah, close everything. This is the moment of truth of wiring everything together. So and truth. <laughs> so we we place the boundaries in what? Let's take this away. So so let's import the boundaries first. So so from the presentation, we had one boundary so far in this folder. How many boundaries or forms? Login UI like this, and we had another form which is the register UI. So these are the boundary. Let's create objects with the boundary. Let's let's leave the, the object initialization or object creation in the last step behind. And then we need to import the controllers. So, so we don't really need these two anymore. But from the controller, we decided that the controller are inside a, the business logic. So the account controllers is, is here and the block controllers is also here. Okay? We don't really need these two anymore. خلاص يعني ال got object the entire class that contains all of the use cases and attributes and getters and setters is not really needed in the business uh, logic layer. So I'm just going to delete this. The same thing if you take a look at the the presentation, we don't really need the user interface, the generic user interface, since we have specific boundaries inside the account boundary. The login UI will register UI. So so from PLL account controllers register controller. صح كده import the register controller class same thing for the login بالمنظر ده تمام حلو عندنا اخر حاجه this is the presentation the business logic the controllers from the business logic the presentation or the uis from the presentation and finally we have what the data access so from the presentation dot I'm um, sorry, I'm talking about presentation. Business logic, this is the entity. We need entity classes. Huh? So the entity is inside the Tafana GOA data access. So from data access, actually we can, let's call it Khayanik Tiba, entities, dot account, import account. So let's start with the user JSON. This is the, the CRUD operation, right? The CRUD object that contains read, write, delete, and update. Now send from I'm going to take it from 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 the rear from here right? so this data access object that is being created for the user table send it to what the entity class right via this via this association you mm -hmm. so create an object and object and then let's just edit this create an object out of the account class send the user um, the CRUD operation or the CRUD object for the user to it right? and then Create an object out of the controller. Let's start with the register controller first. Register controller. And you should know that the register controller accept what? Accept an account object into it. Huh? If the parent takes, Shabab, if the parent takes in the constructor an object, this means that the same object is being accepted by the child. Okay? And if you take a look here, this is the parent. If the constructor is designed this way, Okay. If the constructor is designed this way, you know, the constructor of the parent is accepting a, an account object, this is equivalent of, as having the same constructor inside what? Inside the child. This means that the child as well accepts what or is waiting for what? An account object. Okay. So, just delete this. And the register controller is going to be waiting for an account object. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, Save this in a reference, call it uh, register controller, but just make it small case to indicate that this is the object and this is the class. Now we'll do the same thing for what? Login. And finally, the boundaries are going to be created, the boundary objects are going to be created, and it's going to receive the login, a UI is going to receive a login controller to it. So, so login UI, waiting for a login controller object, which is this one. 
and a register. What did we call it? Register UI is waiting for a register controller object to enter it. Amen. Now save this in a variable and save this in another variable. Amen. And that's that essentially it. I'm not going to talk about the blog here. I'm just going to import it so it's not going to throw this annoying error. Oh, we deleted it. Sorry. Helena, let's just Jenny. Uh, create a dummy so that we don't really have this error so from BLL um, import block okay. so this is this is done we don't really need the user interface the, the generic UI here okay now a couple of edits needs to be done okay. um, so this is accessing the check current logged in so and this is yeah you take a look at the login UI Check current logged in. Check current logged in can be found in the login UI. So, so the login UI is created and saved in this variable. So I'm just going to edit this like this. Amen. Same thing here. Get current username. Get current username. Now for the logins as well, right? So handle login input. Handle login inputs can be found in the login UI. Amen. And finally. And the login can be found also in this login UI. Um, and the register can be found in the register UI. Okay, so this is hand register and hand register inputs. So this is register UI and this is register UI, right? And finally, handle logout. We didn't really put handle regard look out anywhere. Well I had to know the login UI. And these are going to be yani, commented out because we're not going to run these if statements. I'm just going to test these with you. Let's take a leap of faith and try to run this script once, Yani. I think there's an error already, but if I error thing, so there is a problem. Uh, yes, we okay. Let's just leave the session. We cannot leave an else if block empty. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm in game in Hannah. So block controllers dot block. Messi. Okay. Just give me one second. I just want to make sure that this works before you leave. Malish. Okay. So we missed something whenever we were implementing the count in the entities. So how did we miss this up? Definitely, Let's just write it again. Okay. Let's say that this takes something. Don't really care about the blog. I just want this to not throw that annoying error. Well, it takes two, maybe. Oh, here we go. Let's try DCA. If it throws an error, I'm a will local. If it works, then we're good. Let's try to log in. Now I know that there is a user called Halek. We're logged in. Alhamdulillah. So let's try log out. We are logged out. Let's try to create an account. Uh, make it. One, two, three. Okay, let's see the user to JSON. One moment of truth. The refactoring is done. Bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you.